Is flyback feedback getting on your nerves? I know it's been bugging me. Let me back up a second. You're designing something. Here, we'll draw a box for that. And you need voltage regulation. Because out there on the outside, there's all sorts of stuff messing with your power. Maybe some lightning. Maybe some dude running a power drill. Whatever. So we design our flyback, and right here in the feedback loop, we have an optocoupler. Dang, I hate those things. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Flyback feedback with optocouplers can be a pain, but my guests today have a better idea. I've got John Woodward and Anthony Hinn from Maxim Integrated, and we're going to discuss no opto flyback. Yep, that's right. You might not need an optocoupler in your next design. Let's find out more. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about no opto flyback from Maxim Integrated. Hi, John and Tony. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks a lot, Amelia. It's really a pleasure to get together with you and discuss a little bit about our solution for your isolated supply. Thanks, Amelia. Nice to be here. Great to meet you. Okay, so let's jump right in. A lot of us designing voltage converters into our systems don't really have a good understanding of why we actually need isolation. So before we get into the details of isolation and no opto and stuff, John, why is isolation so important to me in my designs? Great question, Amelia. Isolation in a power regulator is simply keeping the input side of the regulator from influencing the output side of the regulator. So try to keep them as isolated as possible, kind of like the name implies. And a system may need to be isolated from the main power supply because of the things listed here in the slide. So ground isolation, for one, preventing interference from a noisy ground current you might have on the input, Level shifting, generating supplies with respect to a desired reference. You may be starting from a 24 volts and you need to isolate that and you can create any other reference voltage you may need in your system. You may be able to generate multiple isolated positive and or negative outputs. So more than one generated from your single input voltage rail. Your transformer will provide a more efficient way to change that voltage level. And also some safety, which may or may not be required for your 60 volt rail. So, Anthony, given that I need an isolated DC to DC power regulator, what typically goes into that type of design? Sure. Let me show you. Here's the conventional isolated DC to DC converters block diagrams. On the left side, you see the power stage. And right in the middle, where the isolation battery is, you have a transformer. That is the power transformer isolating the power from the input to the output side. On the output side, you have the rectifier circuit rectifying the power. And after that, you get your output voltage. Now, in the bottom part is the feedback loop for controlling and regulating the V-out. So the output voltage is sensed by an error amps and a reference. And then that information is transferred back to the primary side control circuit. And that done by a isolation opto isolator to isolate that information. So once the information gets back to the primary side, that complete the whole loops. That information is now being used to modulate the power stage so that you have a correct output voltage independent of input voltage or output loading. Okay, Anthony, but how can I simplify my design and make it smaller while still maintaining isolation? Oh, sure. And that's why we're here. We are going to show you our no opto coupler technology. This is a technology where Maxim enables you as a user to get away from using the RAM, the reference, and the opto coupler, which, by the way, opto coupler has performance degrade over time. And so, for an example, such an industrial power design, you might not be able to use opto coupler because of that. Okay, so back to you, John. How does the no opto coupler solution compare to more traditional solutions I've typically used from a power and size perspective? John, how much do I really gain here? 
What you can see here is a visual representation of how we've tried to simplify some of our solutions for eliminating the optical coupler versus a traditional, say, forward flyback converter. On the left side, we have our power, and on the x-axis, you have the design complexity going from low to high. And highlighted in the box there are the two solutions that Maxim delivers to eliminate the opto coupler. One is an ISO buck, and one is the no opto flyback. And you can compare those against a standard forward flyback converter and maybe others that are required to convert for higher power solutions greater than 500 watts. So you can really see we focus on the lower power side and try to really reduce the design complexity for you in these lower power levels. Got it. Okay. So Anthony, if I still need to sense the voltage on the output to maintain regulation, how do I do that without an optocoupler? So here, Emilia, this is the diagram that show you. On the left side, I have the traditional flyback with optocoupler. And you can see that the error amp reference and optocoupler show in the bottom of the left diagram. Now is being taken away. On the right side is the no optocoupler flyback circuit. There's no optocoupler there. There's nothing to sense the output voltage. So when the switch Q turn on, you have current flowing to the primary side and the energy store in the flyback transformer. So during the off time, the energy kicks back and current flow through the secondary side and when that happened the output voltage is reflected right across the secondary. Secondary voltage is the V out at a diode drop. Okay that voltage is now being sensed on the primary side by the turn ratio. So where I have the arrows there V primary is K time V out plus the diode drops is reflected to the primary side. That voltage is being used to sense the output voltage and that is used to regulate the output voltage indirectly. And I know there are always compromises in just about everything in engineering. So are there any drawbacks or trade-offs that I need to make when I use a primary side sensing technique? Sure. One of the biggest thing that you need to consider is the regulation. Since we are sensing indirectly the output voltage, any drop across the diodes would create an error in regulation. Any leakage inductance also causes a little bit shift of output voltage reflected to the input. So at the end, the regulation for a no optocoupler flyback can be a little bit higher compared to a traditional with optocoupler feedback. So we can get about 5 to 10% regulation. Okay, cool. So if I'm sacrificing on accuracy, what do I gain by not having an optocoupler in the feedback path? The biggest thing, Amelia, is the savings in solution area and board space. What we've done is highlight for you our typical representation of the MAX17498, a standard flyback converter that utilizes the optocoupler and the associated circuitry along with it. And you can see that basic evaluation kit solution size. What we've done is highlight in the red box all that circuitry associated with the optocoupler that can be removed with Maxim solution. And on the right is the blow up of that representation. Anthony, what do you think? Oh, of course, yes. You can see that there are 12 components that were eliminated. You can see the optocoupler is the biggest part right there in the middle. And the TL431, which is the narrow amplifier and reference combined. And then we have all of the RNC and diode to support to make it work. All that can be eliminated. And as I mentioned before, optocoupler degrade over time. In this case, we don't have the optocoupler. We don't have that problem to deal with. Okay, cool. And John, we've been talking about isolation in fairly generic terms so far, but let's dive specifically into what Maxim offers me as a solution without the optocoupler. Yeah, Amelia, thank you. Really, we are excited to introduce the MAX17690, our first no-opto isolated flyback controller, which can operate at 60 volts. This looks like a really interesting device, you guys. Uh, what are some of the cool features and benefits of the MAX17690? Well, as we've been talking to you, the biggest feature is the fact that you can eliminate the opto coupler from the feedback path. But some of the other great features are the fact that it has a four and a half to 60 volt wide input voltage range, and you can actually get 5% accuracy on the output voltage in terms of regulation over line and load. Since it is a controller, we have the ability to drive up to two and four amps of peak and sync gate drive current. You can change the switching frequency depending on your EMI concerns or other specific application needs in terms of the switching frequency. And with all of our industrial devices at Maxim, we operate over the full industrial typical temperature range, which is minus 40 to 125 degrees C. This solution really helps you simplify your magnetics, 
because of the no opto flyback solution, really enhancing the reliability since you can eliminate the opto coupler and really driving home the fact that we can eliminate a lot of your solution size and keep your component count low, which really enhances the reliability. All for you in a 16 pin TQFN 3x3 package. Okay, let's say I'm doing an industrial design. How would the MAX 17690 fit into a typical industrial system that requires an isolated supply? Sure, this is a typical example we've highlighted here. A PLC analog I.O. module. Maybe you have a CPU unit and then you have your analog I.O. module there that we've highlighted on the left. You're starting with a standard 24 volt bus, which is very popular in industrial designs. You need to isolate it. You need to isolate your AC to DC. You need to isolate maybe your amplifier. So how do you do that? You utilize the MAX 17690, which provides that 5% accurate regulated rails. You get multiple rails off that MAX 17690 to provide for all those different sockets within the analog I.O. module. And you can do it very simply, as you can see here in our design. Okay, John. Typically, I've found my transformer-based designs to be pretty difficult and time-consuming. Uh, how do you help me reduce my design time? Yeah, we feel your pain on that one, Amelia. What we've tried to do is make it easy for kind of the standard power requirements you may find in an industrial design. What we've done is create these EV kits where we have standard evaluation boards where you can basically try them out check out the efficiency, check out the regulation. As you can see here, we have eight of them that we will have available. Two we have already on the web and we will fill those out by the end of August with the rest of those six. Quite a number of voltages and current supplies and in some cases even altering the switching frequency due to the EMI concerns you may have. Okay, Anthony, having said all that, if I need to do my own transformer design, do you have any tips or suggestions for me? Oh, sure. If your application doesn't fit into any of those eight EV kit that John's mentioned, and if you want to design your own, we have created a great design tool called EECM tool. And for Mac 17690, we are going to make models which are going to be available in September. This model will help you to design the whole circuit, including that it would recommend a transformer size. It will also specify leakage inductance, cell resonant frequency, all you need to create your own transformer. Cool, that's helpful. So if I want to increase my efficiency, I've heard you guys have a companion device I can use with the MAX 17690? Yes, here is the circuits. We are using the MAX 17606 in companionship with the MAX 17690. The MAX 17606 is the asynchronous driver that drives the asynchronous FET on the secondary side. As you know, the diode will dissipate a lot more power, and if you replace the output rectifying diodes with this synchronous FET and size the FET accordingly, the power dissipation in the FET will be reduced, thus will improve the efficiency of your solution. And aside from that, the synchronous FET have a lower voltage drop across it, and by using the FETs instead of the diodes, you're also reducing the error created by the diodes and especially the load regulations. The diode voltage drop vary with loads. With the MOSFET, that variation is minimized. But one more thing that we want to point out about the MAX 17690 is that in order to reduce load regulation, we sense the output voltage during the time when the current through the transformer is decreasing to its zero. And that really a feature where it makes our performance a lot better than some other solution in the market to improve the regulation. With the single FET, you can achieve regulation in less than 5%. Cool. Okay. And John, give me a quick rundown on what else I need to know about this MAX 17606. Well, the MAX 17606 is a great device. You can throw it in the secondary side of any flyback converter to enhance your regulation and enhance the efficiency. It has a wide input voltage range of 4.5 to 36 volts. It drives standard N-channel MOSFETs. You can program the gate drive on that. And also it does have the standard industrial operating temp range of minus 40 to 125 degrees C. Having an efficient design is important and our MAX17606 really helps with that. 
And what comes from better efficiency is improved thermal management, which is always important in an isolated design. You can program that off time to mitigate any discontinuous conduction mode ringing. And the programmable gate drive also allows to optimize any gate loss you may have with your FET drivers. Awesome. Okay, I'm ready to get started with my no opto power supply design. Uh, Where do I go next and how do I get started? Well, like we showed you before, we have a lot of EV kits that are available or in the works. We have samples available now. It is fully released to production and many customers are lined up to try and get their hands on this, gaining a lot of traction. You can go to our Max17690 product page, which we've highlighted here. We have a quick link for all of the EV kits. You can see right there at the Max17690 EV kit page. And any other questions you have, we always have a great support network at Maxim Integrated, which you can access directly at MaximIntegrated.com support. Okay, well, if customers are lining up, I should get in line too. (laughs) Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much, Anthony and John, for joining me today. Thank you very much, Amelia. Very nice meeting you again. Yeah, Amelia, it was really fantastic. We really appreciate the opportunity to describe our isolated solution without the Opto flyback. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about no Opto flyback from Maxim Integrated. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.